Hello everyone, and welcome to Arcanum. In this two-part series, I will discuss the hidden truth about six demonic symbols. They are the most common symbols most people are familiar with, but the truth to your understanding of them may not be as it seems. The Baphomet. So you're probably familiar with the Baphomet, but do you know what it is? The devil. Satan. The embodiment of evil. Nope. A weirdly spliced animal humanoid that's also hermaphrodite and represents an ideology? Yeah, kinda. But it's a little more complex than that. The Baphomet is not what you think it is. And yes, I did call it an it. Not to prevent misgendering it, because it doesn't really have a gender. Well, not a single one anyway. From horror films, to metal music, to far-right Christians and edgy Satanists, Baphomet has been used to represent a devilish figure. But Baphomet has literally nothing to do with the devil. The Baphomet comes from the occult. Now what is the occult, you ask? Well, you're probably picturing a bunch of weirdos in dark hooded robes encircled in a forest sacrificing a virgin to Satan. Well, you couldn't be more wrong. Virgins are notoriously difficult to find since they don't get out much. Oh, and we're also not sacrificing anything to Satan. The occult encompasses varied beliefs and practices that do not strictly fit into conventional religion or science. Now the Baphomet is not an actual deity or idol to be worshipped. Rather, it is a symbol and tool used by occultists in order to illustrate the sum of the universe. Everything both parallel and paradox. Kind of like the yin and yang, but way more elaborate than it needed to be. Like peanut butter and jelly, chicken and waffles, and burger and fries. There are things in this world that must be together, or else it will be incomplete. There will not be balance. It's the same for the Baphomet, which represents a necessary balance in the universe. The Baphomet depicts the equilibrium of opposites within the universe. Light and dark, represented by opposing moons. Half human, depicted by a human torso and arms. And half animal, depicted by the legs and head of a goat. Half female, depicted by some very round and perky <laughs> demonetization and half male, depicted by an appropriately placed caduceus. The caduceus being a symbol used in alchemy to depict the magical equilibrium of matter, of course. The Baphomet's hands pointing to the sky and to the earth furthers this notion of duality and balance, representing the occultist motto of as above, so below, a concept that implies the universe is reflected in everything, both in a philosophical and scientific sense. That which is above is like that which is below the macrocosm and microcosm. The universe is within us and we are within the universe. You get the point. Now fire is an important characteristic used in occult and spiritual imagery, not just because it's objectively cool, but because it's used to represent the spirit. And the spirit is the human connection to the divine, which is what we see on Baphomet's head. <coughs> the other one, pervs. It's what occultists refer to as astral light, an important element that represents soul above matter, which is further highlighted by the upward facing pentagram below the flame. The upward facing pentagram signifying the spirit above the four elemental forces, that of which are water, earth, fire, air, which can be seen again as the flame on Baphomet's head for fire, fish scales on its tummy for water, a glow below its feet for earth, and wings of course for air. The portrayal of duality depicted again because we can't get enough of repetition, with the flame on Baphomet's head being the connection to the divine above, while it is grounded by sitting and being connected to the earth or the material realm below. The duality of astral light is further emphasized by Baphomet's sick tats, solved on the left arm and quagla on the right arm. Now unless you've been studying dead languages, you probably don't know what that means. Well, it's Latin for dissolve and coagulate. It refers to the transmutation of energy and matter, that matter must be broken down to its basic elements before reforming into something new. This notion of transformation of matter, whether it be in a scientific sense as an act of transforming physical matter, or in a metaphysical sense, such as the transformation of oneself, is further explained when we understand that the Baphomet was intended to be analogous to the Philosopher's Stone as a method of understanding the Philosopher's Stone. The Philosopher's Stone is pertinent to understanding occult metaphysics, it's the holy grail of alchemy. Yes, that's the same philosopher's stone that was just collecting dust in a wizard bank run by goblins. 
No explanation as to how that got there. But anywho. So what does it all mean? In one aspect, the Baphomet is an embodiment of universal balance, symbolizing a perfect social order. And in another aspect, the Baphomet symbolizes the concept of balance that was essential to the ceremonial magician's notion of astral light, which is the current of force behind all magical occult work. The Pentagram As previously shown on the Baphomet, it is one of the most recognizable symbols. Now, is it a symbol of a satanic nature? Obviously not. Is it a terribly overused symbol in any remotely demonic related imagery in lazily written and researched horror movies and TV shows? Most definitely. The pentagram and the inverted version has been regularly used in association with evil and the Christian version of the devil. However, these symbols are hella old, dating back to BCE, before Christ was everywhere. And as expected, they have nothing to do with the devil. The pentagram, which becomes a pentacle when enclosed by a circle, is heavily used in Wicca, a nature-based religion. And both symbols are used in occult practices as well. The pentagram and pentacle are used as the foundation for many rituals, as they are believed to be parallel to the points on the human body and represent the four elemental forces of water, earth, fire, and air, all balanced to create the fifth element of spirit. The upward facing pentagram and pentacle depict spirit at the top, ruling over the four elemental forces. This expresses the mind's domination over the elements, whereas the inverted means the opposite. It is matter ruling above the spirit, the descent of spirit into matter. Think of it as a reflection of mind over matter with the inverted focused on matter over mind. When used for magical work, and yes, that's magic with a K, I'm not talking about this kind of BS magic. Levitating and vanishing. The upward facing pentagram and pentacle is a focus on the divine and spiritual matters and the downward facing is a focus on earthly related matters. So again, nothing to do with the devil, not even when it's inverted. Shocking, I know. Given its long and varied history, it's not surprising that many other schools of spirituality have made use of these symbols. And when I say other schools of spirituality, of course, I'm talking about the Christians. It's not the first time they borrowed from the pagans. During the medieval era, Christians used the symbol of the pentagram to represent the five wounds of Jesus Christ and the Star of Bethlehem. A few hundred years following the death of Jesus Christ, the pentagram became the primary symbol of the church. But we can never have nice things. So after a period of bloody violence from the Inquisition against any perceived pagan associations, the pentagram's use was widely stripped from the church. Not a very Christian thing to do. Nevertheless, the pentagram, including the inverted version, can still be seen throughout many churches within the art and architecture. The Upside Down Cross, the ultimate satanic symbol denouncing Jesus Christ, Christianity, and God itself by turning it upside down. Actually, no, the upside down cross is not demonic at all. Although it's understandable that it might be viewed as such, to turn a cross on its head as a form of opposition to the cross and Christianity as a whole. However, it's actually pretty damn holy. The upside down cross is called the cross of St. Peter. Yes, that Peter. No, 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 not that Peter. That Peter. The faithful follower of Jesus Christ, formerly known as one of the Twelve Apostles. Peter did not believe himself worthy to be crucified in the same manner as Jesus. So what did he request in honor of Jesus Christ? To die in far more pain and agony by being crucified upside down. As a good friend does, of course. It was the first century's version of pouring one out for the homies. Things were more intense back then. 
Because of this, it became known as the Cross of St. Peter, which is widely used in churches and even the Vatican. That being said, intentions can make a difference in how symbols are used. So if you see crosses turning upside down on the walls in your home, that's probably not St. Peter dropping by to say hi, and you should probably call a demonologist and a priest for safe measure.